Welcome back to Hero Goldberg. Today we're going to be talking about Roly Tommaso's sneaker problem. I actually made this video last week, but I didn't care for the outcome, so here we are another Wednesday evening simping together. Nevertheless, before we get into the meat and potatoes, the main dish, let me just give you an overview of your possible philosophical pathways as a man in 2023, if you so choose to elect for them instead of being a soy boy. So, Starting from the top left, Andrew Tate wants you to be a top OG, gangsta. Hamza is desperately self-improving in hopes that he can finally one day gain admission to the human race. National Socialist Potato Head continues his fervent search for a traditional, feminine, conservative, and MGTOW wife. And finally, Richard Spencer is gazing longingly and passionately at the sculpted ass of Apollo. Let us continue. This controversy bubbled up from the depths of the soy sphere because Roly Tommaso said something on Twitter that was MGTOW-esque, like men should take care of themselves, not get married early, possibly get a vasectomy, you're not forced to, but just fixate on what is in your own interest and not society at large. Uh, now, we know that Rolo, he is a coper. He was more effective as just a blogger because when he got in the visual realm, there were all these people mogging him, and so he just looks like a mediocre, washed up, uh, you know, rock star or whatever. But he claps back to this criticism of, oh, I wake up in Miami and Vegas, hotel, text friends, that's a great life, coffee and gym, lunch with biz friends, make thumbnails and reels. Why is that a highlight of your day, making thumbnails? DMs from IG models, yeah, they're not sleeping with you, dude. Just because you pose, you know, he has these pictures with the models, but you ain't doing anything with them. It's like bragging about being the gay hairdresser for the Oscars, okay? And then you end up with Billy Porter of all people, and you're trying to say it's masculine. <laughs> uh, checks hex status, drive Camaro, not a Bugatti though, lol. Do shows with beautiful women. Call wife and daughter. Hopefully the shows are not with the wife and daughter. I hope that's just it happened to be there. Fly home, run with greyhounds, rehearse for a band or with the band. All right. So, I mean, whatever. I don't think he truly believes he's an alpha male, but he kind of has to flex a little bit because of the dog-eat-dog -dog environment of the manusphere. So, Roly essentially represents that late-stage Western Civ libertarian mindset. Save yourself. Don't jump on a grenade for the sake of tradition or society that hates you, especially if you are a straight cream cheese male. And, you know, he's got something of a point because these trad guys will say, serving God, that's the truth, not the modern world, not the state. But of course, back in the day, the trad calf or the Putinist Orthodox model, the umma, the caliphate, whatever you want to call it, those institutions may have been the state themselves or closely aligned, so they're not going to tell you don't have kids because you have to propagate, right? Religion only works if people are reproducing, not just wasting away and dying, even though many individuals would take that martyrdom complex as an excuse for not wanting to do anything in the world. Um, and obviously, if the king needs soldiers for his army, you're not going to say don't have babies. That is generally the secularist perspective men need to advocate for what benefits them and not feel obsessed with pursuing a path just because that's what they did in the old days. The trad guys who are represented here by this individual Sneeko are like, oh, no, 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 you have to. You need to have kids. That's the most important aspect of your existence. And you can go down here to see this guy says, even with the world against me, when I come home, I agree with my wife and children and my wife takes my paycheck. No, the joy can explain the look on my face. And then later on, he admits that it's actually his second marriage. That doesn't mean that, of course, he's bound to fail in his next one, but it is sort of interesting given the fact that so many dudes say marriage and kids, that's the ultimate achievement in life you have to be worried about. The only problem with Sneeko is that he's faced serious allegations of being a cuckboy and that he's watched his wife have sex with other men. This would put him in the same rather low category of the blue-haired wonder destiny who was on a stream and his girlfriend or wife in the background was dancing with 
one of those guys from the openly gay comedian show, Abba and Preach, I think it's called. So that was a humiliation. This is true of Sneeko. It's like, yeah, be trad, but does trad mean you're a cuckold? And it's kind of difficult to say. Uh, and I also think it's fascinating because you got the cream cheese boomer telling you don't invest in the system, which to some extent benefited him, like he was able to get married, have a kid. On the other hand, there's this medley of racial hybrids. Sneeko is Hungarian, Moroccan, and Haitian. You've got Andrew Tate. You have Elliot Hulse, who was preaching all that trad conservatism, even though his wife looks like basically a very traditional Karen. And now, by the way, is Elliot Hulse the same as the Hodge twins, or are those just some other cucks? I really don't know. But it's just... It, you really have to stop and consider because all of these individuals are the byproducts of unions that were violating traditional cultural taboos against exogamous sorts of relationships. And now they're saying you got to be traditional, but you say, what would that traditionalism look like? Would it be a kind of a mass market Islam, perhaps without the slavery, except the guys who are working 70 hours a week for their wives? What would that exactly entail? It's just overall conservative norms but obviously not conservative enough to where it's going to exclude these individuals i'll have i'll let you guys have that discussion in the comments because i just I couldn't help but see it people do get on my case and say you have to take a stronger position trad or more of the migtail and the truth be told i've always approached the world and said let me go out and experience it through you know in-person interactions study whatnot and then you form your philosophy there. You don't start from this philosophy or religious perspective and insist that the world match it, which is what a lot of these dudes on the internet do, especially the trad guys. They got those big foam stadium fingers where they've been sticking God knows where, and they say, oh, you should be doing this. You need to do that. They're always browbeating and castigating others for not living in what they consider to be the right fashion. But then you ask, what are you doing? Because I suspect a lot of online trad dudes are either true cells or, oh, I went to the Philippines for a wife, guys, neither of whom are particularly admirable in any way. So I'm just going to give some basic advice. This is actually fairly practical. If you want to start taking action in your own you know, realm of existence instead of wasting so much time on the internet to where you're going to be 35 or 39 and do the whole go cope in the Philippines or... One of the worst things I've seen is these dudes saying, oh, I'm going to join the monastery. Why do you have to always embrace asceticism and life denial just because things are difficult? Like, you idolize these great men of history, and yet you're so cowardly that your only thing you can do is run away to some, you know, shrine and live the rest of your life there. See, that's what people should do because they genuinely want to, even in times of plenty. But if you're doing that just because you're depressed, because you can't find a woman... To me, it's very insincere, and it really just goes to the point, what is what is the value of religion if it's just running away from the world constantly? But you, you, you always see this, always see this attitude from people, and it's not terribly something that we should look up to. Let's say that you're planning or aspiring to build a family at some point. The first thing to do is not create these silly obstacles that are very impractical, and that's what folks who spend too much time on the internet do. It's why if you ask them, where's your trad wife, they just start insulting you. I'm not going to say which YouTuber did that, but you can probably take a guess. Who's the biggest trad coper in the manosphere? You go ahead and look. At any rate, you'll hear this in many cases. Yeah, but I have to make six figures and have my house in the suburbs or have my uh, ranch fully stocked homestead. No, that is just buying into, especially the six figures dynamic. It's buying into the very materialistic mindset you claim to reject. Like people say, oh, you're a satanic care bear. You just love money. Well, it's this strange conundrum that faces many Muslims and Christians because they have this animosity towards care bears for being materialistic and greedy, but they're also somewhat reliant on care bearism for the existence of their own theology and religions. I mean, let's be real. You can say care bearers killed Jesus Christ, but then Jesus Christ had to die for your sins. So in a sense, they are advancing your entire moral structure of the universe. I, I know I'm going to get some anger from that, but what can we do? 
So when you say I have to have six figures or I have to have enough Bitcoin and gold, you are very much towing the line of the Care Bear, spiritually speaking, while claiming you're against it. So that's the first thing that has to end. Uh, how do you move forward? Well, consider what the Orthodox Care Bears do, both in the United States and in Israel. And they have very high birth rates, especially in Care Bear land. They just go on welfare. They live their lives. They collect the benefits and they try to maintain a traditional existence. You have to, again, remove from your mind the boomer conservative. I have to have this lifestyle. I have to be a consumer. I have to be complaining about Jamal on welfare while I'm working 70 hours a week to fund the midget in Ukraine and LGBT and BLM. You have to be able to step away from that stuff. Again, it goes back to the materialism. I've got to be a good citizen paying my taxes and breaking my back as a workaholic. Until you do that, you're going to be caught in the same trap. So you go on welfare, which you can still work a minimum wage job. Republicans are lying to you. You can still have a minimum wage job and collect benefits. You get your uh, food stamps. You get earned income credit. You get subsidized housing, transportation, subsidized education. You could still try to homeschool your kids, teach them stuff, have a garden, um, raise them the way you think is correct, but you're not sitting there wasting your life in service to a system you claim to hate. It also eradicates the MGTOW arguments. Oh, she's going to take all my stuff. What is she going to cease if you're living on government benefits and just collecting checks? You have no assets. In many respects, it's more risk averse if you're going to have kids and get married than trying to grind 70 hours a week as a tradesman or as a boomer corporate drone just so you can feel like you're upright and I'm not pathetic. I'm not lowbrow like Jamal. Well, guess what? If you say you truly believe in these things, which I suspect many of them don't deep down inside, and you are engaged in a war of good versus evil, do you have to play fair? Perhaps not. Maybe you need to be more creative and that's how you're going to survive. Now the catch would be, you're probably not going to get an S.C. Williams, spick and span, virginal, everything's perfect, looks amazing. It might be a lower tier Becky or a Mestiza possibly with a tramp stamp, maybe some piercings. But is your religion about redemption or is it, oh, if you're not perfect for me, then you're uh, imperfect forever. And, and again, you don't have to take this advice, but I would say follow what you claim to believe in and then be practical, especially if you're an average dude, because unfortunately, so much of this comes down to, well, I need to have that fantasy online. Guys are afraid of taking the pragmatic approach, even if it is flawed, because it's not going to live up to what they've dreamt or conceived. Most things are that way, though, because they're entertaining. Pornography is usually looks and has more variety than the real thing. It's better. Anything, you know, politics, specific systems, whatnot. The real world is unclean, it's messy, and it usually has some share of heartbreak in it. But that's why if you're truly sincere about what you believe, if you got to have the kids to save your people, if you've got to do the quiverful movement for the sake of serving God, then get to it and spend less time with the online LARPing. That's what I think guys should do. And it isn't necessarily that I view it as a great lifestyle choice, but instead of being a guy such as Sneeko, you're some, you know, public figure, you're getting cucked and you're saying you got to have kids. Maybe you should be going, all right, how do I do this? And how do I do so practically? Because you, sure, middle-class, upper-class women, they're not going to be interested in going on welfare, most of them, because they can get guys who are richer. But you can probably find in the country a working-class chick who has baby rabies, and you can just you know dispense with the pleasantries there. You might have to be a little bit creative about finding one, but it's doable. And once more, it's actually making progress towards what you claim to believe in in some small form instead of just spending decades, which I genuinely believe for some of these guys is going to be decades, of shaking your foam finger on the internet.com.